Good morning, Journey. How good is the Lord in this place? Man, I'm so thankful for his presence. I'm so thankful that, man, we can gather together uh, and just experience his glory, to experience his manifest presence. And I just sense the Lord in this house. And I've been, I mean, I've been praying for this week and praying for this new series. And I just believe that, man, we're going to experience some freedom in this place during these next four or five weeks. If we haven't met before, let me just introduce myself. My name is Adam. I'm one of the pastors here. And again, we're in a new series this morning entitled, In My Feelings. In My Feelings. And we're talking about freedom in the area of emotional health. And what I know and what I believe is that God has given us these next couple of weeks so the Holy Spirit can bring healing to some deep places in our life. You know, we're all, I kind of look at it like this, we're, we're all onions and the Lord is constantly revealing things in our life that we need to take care of, that we need to give to the Lord so we can become what? More like him. That's the goal. I want to be more like Jesus. And so uh, my prayer for you, my prayer for myself is God, reveal things to me that I need to work on. Maybe it's emotional. Maybe it's something else in your life. But reveal things to me because, Lord, I want to be like you. I want to be like you. This morning we're talking about the subject of worry, anxiety, and fear. Worry, and anxiety, and fear. I want you to know something, that, that fear, it's a spirit. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, joy, peace, and a sound mind. Fear is a spirit. But I want to ask you a question. I'm not going to ask you to, to raise your hands or uh, to answer this out loud, but just think to yourself, how many of you struggle with worry, anxiety, and fear? Do you struggle with worry, anxiety, and fear? Maybe it's worry, maybe it's anxiousness about, anxiousness about a job, maybe it's uh, uh, over a relationship, maybe it's over uh, your marriage, maybe it's over financial issues, I don't know what it might be. But what worry, anxiety, and fear does is it robs us from experiencing relationship with our Father and relationship with the people we love. And that's what we're talking about today. Worry, anxiety, and fear. This is what uh, Matthew 6 says. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows what you need. All these things. Your heavenly Father knows exactly what you need. Listen, my prayer this morning is for you not to look at worry, anxiety, and fear the same way. For you not to experience worry, anxiety, and fear the same way. Anyone else in here right now to say, yeah, that's good. I want that in my life. I don't want to experience worry, anxiety, and fear anymore. Come on, anyone else in here right now? I want that in my life. Yeah, I want that in my life. Let's pray right now. Holy Spirit, we bind the spirit of fear in this place. Lord, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, joy, peace, and a sound mind. And Lord, it seems today that the spirit of fear is running rampant everywhere, Father God. 
But Lord, you have given us freedom in this area. God, I pray that you would, we would experience freedom in this area. So God, we say today, fear go in the Holy Spirit come. Fear go in the name of Jesus in the Holy Spirit come. And so Holy Spirit, would you rule and would you reign in this place? We give you complete and total freedom. No one in this room came to hear an eloquent message from me this morning, God. No one came this morning to hear a song, God. But we all came here to hear from you. And so Jesus, this morning, we say, God, speak for your servants are listening. God, may this word this morning be rhema, God. May it be truth and may it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, God, that we would not experience fear, anxiety, and worry in our lives because it chokes out the fruit, God. Lord, we want to be the people of God you've called us to be. And so we give it to you. We yield to you this morning. We give you our, our mind, our will, and our emotions, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Romans 12.1, it says this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be and do not be conformed, say conformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, say transformed. By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and what is acceptable and perfect will of God. Paul says, don't be conformed to this world. That word conformed in the Greek, when you look at it and you go back, it's this word schematic. Schematic means this, to be identical in the way that you think. So Paul is saying this. He's saying, don't be identical in the way that you think as the world thinks. But what? Be transformed. That word transformed in the Greek is this word metamorpho. Metamorpho, as you can tell, is this word that we get in the English, which is metamorphosis. You get this picture of a caterpillar turning to a butterfly, metamorphosis, complete and total transformation. And so what Paul is saying right here is this. Don't be identical in the way that you think as the world, but be completely transformed. Completely and totally transformed. Why? Because you can be saved. You can be going to heaven but you can still be experiencing the same thing that the world experiences. You can still be experiencing the same defeat that the world experiences. And victory comes with the renewing of the mind, with the transforming of the mind. And so Paul is saying, don't think the way the world thinks, but be completely and totally transformed. Think differently. Think differently. Think differently than the world. You see, worry, anxiety, and fear, they're really the same exact emotion. Worry leads to anxiety. Anxiety leads to fear. Fear subsides to anxiety. Anxiety subsides to worry, right? They're all really the same emotion experienced on different levels. Here's the definition of fear. Fear is this. Fear is a negative emotion caused by a real or perceived threat to our well-being. When there's a threat to our well-being, we become, what, fearful. We feel this emotion. When I'm, uh, my yard is, uh, is full of plants and we got a river, uh, little, not a river, but a little creek back in the back and it's really like a haven, I feel like, for snakes, Okay, so oftentimes when I'm doing the yard, man, I have this worry, I have this anxiety that I'm going to encounter a snake because, man, I am scared of snakes. Two weeks ago, I started doing some weed eating in my front yard, and the next thing I know is I see this little two-foot black snake scurrying away the other way. Well, I immediately, I scream, ah, and I run away as fast as I can, dropping my weed eater. It's just this little bitty snake, y'all, but I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of this snake. I experience fear because I feel like it's a threat to my well-being. I don't want to experience a snake biting me. I don't care if it's a black snake. I don't care what kind of snake it is. I don't want to be around it. Yes. 
Anxiety is this. Anxiety is to be uneasy and nervous about an event or person or problem I can't control. I can't control whether or not a snake is going to be there or not. And I know that. And so I'm, I'm in the back of my head the entire time I'm weed eating. I'm thinking, man, Lord, please don't let me run into a snake. Don't let me encounter a snake. Worry is this. Worry is to mentally dwell on difficulty or trouble. To mentally dwell on difficulty or trouble. I'm, I'm worrying about encountering the snake. You see, Scripture says this, though. Scripture says this. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. It's actually the commandment that we see most often within the Bible. It occurs 365 times. Do not worry. Do not worry about tomorrow. Do not be anxious. Do not be afraid. And so if the Bible commands us not to do it, don't you think that we can overcome worry, anxiety, and fear? If God is telling us, don't have worry, don't have anxiety, don't have fear, it is something that we can overcome. But what's happened in in our lives is many Christians, many people are okay because they think to themselves, I'm okay with living with this worry, anxiety, and fear. It's just a part of me. But the Bible says it doesn't have to be a part of you, church. It doesn't have to be something that you struggle with anymore. It doesn't have to be something that you walk around with because he's giving you love, joy, peace, and a sound mind. It does not have to be anything that you struggle with anymore. He's commanded you, commanded you, don't be afraid. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't have anxiety. God created us to live in peace, not in fear. Let me make this statement. As much as you know the presence of God by peace, you can know the presence of the enemy by fear. As much as you know the presence of God by the peace of God that you experience, you can know the presence of the enemy by fear. As you know that stress and anxiety on whatever level it might be, it's the number one reason for doctor's visits. It's the number one reason for medication in the U.S. is worry, anxiety, and fear. It's something that this world struggles with. It's the reason why uh, many people are medicated. God's called us not to have worry, anxiety, fear. This is what Jesus says in Matthew 6.25. He says this, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. And Jesus Jesus told us in verse 34, he says, not to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has enough problems on its own. You know, I've struggled in my own life with worry and anxiety over whatever goal I'm trying to accomplish in my life. I have a hard time, I feel like, some cutting off my mind. I'm always thinking about whatever goal I have in my life and how to succeed, how to, how to make it happen. And what's really happened over the, the past 15 years or so is it's really manifested itself because I'm, I feel like I'm constantly worrying. And I've really been working the past six months. Stop worrying, Adam. Just live in the moment. Stop, stop carrying this around. And I've really, uh, for the past 15 years, just kind of concentrated on whatever, whatever thing I have in that season to accomplish, I've just... It's robbed me of my ability to be present with my family and with God in the moment. Maybe you're like me. Maybe you're like me and you've, you've worried on different things. And for me, it's just whatever goal I'm trying to accomplish at that particular season in my life. And what it's done is, again, it's manifested itself actually in my shoulder. And it's caused physical pain. And this physical pain has... You see how worry, anxiety, and fear not just only robs you emotionally, but it it can actually take place physically in your life? You know, um, I've been friends with Pastor Joey now for a long time, a decade or more. And uh, back over five years ago, I remember telling him a few times this. I remember telling him, I trust God to make a way in the situation. I trust God that God got, has it. But I don't trust man. I think that man is going to ruin what God has intended. What an arrogant statement. To think that man is more powerful than God? Or that somehow a decision that I make could ruin the destiny that God has called me into? 
I've got news for you this morning, church. We are not that powerful. We are not that powerful. You can't take yourself out of the destiny of God when you really have a heart for him. There's nothing that you could do. Because my Bible says he makes all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. No matter what happens in your life, he is going to make it work together for your good. Don't have the same thought process I foolishly had over five years ago. God can work it out. God can make it happen. Here's the root of all fear, anxiety, and worry. And it's all the same. I want to give you the root of it. Here it is. It's the orphan spirit. The root of all fear, anxiety, and worry is the orphan spirit. Let me explain it this way. This generation is fatherless. The enemy has attacked the nuclear family. And fathers nowadays are absent physically and emotionally, mentally. They're absent altogether. You can be in a room and not be there. And there's this fatherless generation growing up without a father. And so children nowadays think that they have to make things happen on their own. They think they have to take things in their own ability and and make it happen because they don't have a father to help them and the father to give them wisdom. And so they don't trust their earthly father, so therefore they don't trust their heavenly father. You see that? They don't trust their heavenly father, so they don't trust their spiritual father. There's a fatherless generation that rejects God the Father and rejects spiritual fathers. Let's talk about God the Father for a moment, and then we'll talk about spiritual fathers. God loves us so much. And we hear that intellectually. We know that since we were kids in Sunday school for many of us. But it doesn't really, we don't really know it a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? We don't really know it, but God adores you. He, he knows the number of hairs on your head. I mean, he, he, he counts them. Like, how amazing and mind-blowing is that, that the God of the universe loves you that much? I think about it like this, man. I love my kids so much, I would do anything for them. And lately, it's been like, I just really enjoy, uh, my kids are 9 and 11. I'm really enjoying the age that they're in right now. And we just have this... We really do. We have this amazing relationship. And I'll, I'll say to them often, uh, multiple times a day, uh, Ruth, Caleb, man, I love you so much. And they'll reply back to me, uh, well, I love you more. And then I'll reply back to them, no, I love you more. And they'll reply back, no, I love you more. No, I love you more. No. And it's this ongoing thing. And I'm like, oh, this, this is, I, I love this relationship right now. This is so good. This feels, this feels amazing. The way I love my kids, though, is pure evil compared to the way God the Father loves us, church. It is pure, like his love for you is so perfect and so extravagant and so wonderful. It's beyond anything that we could ever comprehend. We have to understand that. Let's talk about spiritual fathers. You know the, uh, the professions that are the most mistrusted professions with, with the top two really are. Number one is politicians. (laughs) We don't trust politicians. I didn't hear that. (laughs) Number two, pastors right. Pastors. Pastors. Just in case you don't, you don't know the, uh, the ones that are most trusted is, uh, is nurses and teachers. Thank you. Nurses and teachers. Yeah, yeah, give it up for him. But the most mistrusted, the second most mistrusted is pastors. Why? Well, one thing is the orphan spirit. But another thing is that we see everything in the news even right now. What's happening with the local church, what's happening with with Hillsong, what's happening with uh, other churches, and we see men of God fall. Why is, this, why is this occurring? Why, I, one reason I believe, though, is that there's not accountability within the church, right? That's why we've set up 
That's why we're a church who has a healthy church government of, of trustees and overseers and elders. And it's up to the pastors to submit to them. As I'm, as I'm even walking this next season, that's what I'm committed to do, to commit myself, to submit myself to them, right? It's healthy to have that. We need that within the church. There's been, and here's, but also here's the problem. Here's the problem too, is that we as people in this social media culture are attracted to people who are trendy, have all these things uh, on the surface together, right? Uh, in the social media culture of likes and comments and shares and TikTok and all this kind of things. We need to find men and women of God who have a heart for God. Heart for God alone. Listen, Israel asked for Saul to be their king. Had everything looking together, it looked like he should be a king. When God is saying, here, let me give you David. Let me give you David, a man after my heart. A sign of maturity within uh, believers is a sign of being able to uh, be able to find the right mother right spiritual mother and father in your life and make no mistake about it we need spiritual mothers and fathers within our lives and what I believe and what I know is that God is appointing spiritual mothers and fathers within this house who are being raised up to disciple the next generation to pour into those who come in because we have to be ready for this harvest of souls that are coming and you my friend are called to be a spiritual mother and father to this fatherless generation he is restoring people back to the father through spiritual mothers and fathers who are not doing it out of man I want I want to be known I want to I want to be looked upon as great no who simply just want to say man I want God to be known. I have a heart for the Lord. I want him to be seen. I want him to be the center of attention. We have to choose to be people who are spiritual mothers and fathers who have a heart after God and God alone. Amen? So let me tell you now uh, three ways to overcome fear, anxiety, and worry. Number one, consider them worry, anxiety, fear, as tactics of the enemy to destroy your life and to rob you of your joy. Mark 4, 19. Then the cares and anxieties of this world and distractions, say distractions. Distractions of the age and the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches and the craving and passionate desire for other things creep in and choke and suffocate the word and it becomes fruitless. Look at what distractions do. Becomes fruitless. It's when the devil puts something in your life that distracts you from what he has for you. You know one of the biggest distractions today are these things? We're sitting there scrolling on social media, looking at other things while our family is all around and it's distracting us from our relationship with God, distracting us from other things. We're looking at social media, we're looking at investments, we're looking at Bitcoin, whatever it might be. And these things are so distracting. They're so distracting. It's robbing us from the fruit that God is calling us into. And because of that, you can't focus on God and the people that you love. And that's the greatest problem with worry and anxiety. We're looking for the next dopamine hit. We're addicted to it. Maybe we're going to miss something. I'm so I'm scrolling through Facebook. Maybe I'm going to miss something. And live in the moment. Live in the moment. Number two. Turn every worrisome or anxious thought into prayer until victory. Turn every worrisome or anxious thought into prayer until victory. Philippians 4, 6 says this, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for not one thing. But by prayer. Listen, when you're, what does that look like? When you are uh, come before the Lord and you pray and you feel distracted because maybe there's an anxious thought that comes in. You know the exact thing that you become worry or an anxious thought? That's the thing you need to be praying for in that moment. If you feel like you're distracted, you come before the Lord to pray and there's this anxious thought. Give it to the Lord. Pray through it. Pray through it. 
Be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. What does with thanksgiving look like? It looks like this. Lord, I just, I trust you. I know that you, I know that you love me. I know that you're there for me. I'm thankful. It's Jesus, you're so good. And Lord, you, you understand my every thought, my every worry. And so, Lord, I just give you this anxious thought. I give you this thing I'm worrying about. I give you my finances, Lord. I give you this relationship with my kid. God, I give you this relationship with my spouse. I just give it over to you right now because I thank you, Lord, that you've got all things working together for my good. And Lord, you are in control. You're thanking God because you know he's the best father in the universe. Listen, well, Father, fearless child of God, the root of all fear, the root of all worry, anxiety is the orphan spirit because orphans are on their own and they take care of their own problems. You're not an orphan, though. You have the best father in the universe. And the devil wants you to feel as though you're on your own and you have to solve your own problems And I say this gently, but I say it boldly at the same time. Stop grieving over the father you didn't have. And start rejoicing that you have the best father in the universe. He is your father. He loves being your father. And he loves helping you through the processes of anything that you encounter in your life. Nothing is too small for your heavenly father. Nothing is too large for your heavenly father. He just enjoys the ride. He just enjoys relationship. And as we're walking through life, obsessing about these things in our life that distract us, what it means is we're wasting this relationship that is so incredibly good with our heavenly Father and with the people we love around us. Listen, let me, let me put it like this. If Jeff Bezos was your father, man, you wouldn't worry about money for the rest of your life, would you? But God the Father, he can buy Jeff Bezos a billion times over, man. Come on. He owns everything. He holds the world together. He is sovereign over it all. We have a good Father who loves you. Understand your identity is not in yourself, but identity comes from being a child of the Most High God. Being a child of the Most High God. He is your Father and He loves you. May you accept that you are a a son or a daughter of the Most High God. Number three is by faith believe and confess that God is your loving Father and He cares for you. God is your loving Father and He cares for you. Back to Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 now. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. And the peace that surpasses all understanding. It's when something happens in your life and you just have this peace. You just have this comfort. And everyone else around you is It's like, man, why do you have so much peace? That that incredibly hard thing just happened to you, and you just got peace. You're like, man, I understand whose I am. I'm a child of the most high God. There's no reason for me to worry. It's not going to do anything for me. He's got it all. He's going to take care of it, whatever it might be. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart. That word guard in the Greek is this word phoreo. Phoreo means to protect from enemy invasion. When the enemy is trying to invade your thought process, trying to invade your mind, the Lord is raising up a standard against him when you are a child of God. And he's saying no. Because you have agreed with the word of God that you are a child of his. You don't have to worry. He's protecting you from military invasion from the enemy. How good is that? How thankful are you? Come on. It's so good. 1 John says this, that perfect love cast out all fear. (laughs) Perfect love cast out all fear. I don't have perfect love. None of you have perfect love. Who has perfect love? Him, God the Father. Perfect love. And when we understand whose we are, we're a child of the most high God. That perfect love casts out all fear. There's no room for it in your life. Let me close with this. Matthew 6, 31 through 34. This is 
the message version. We led um, New King James Version earlier, and I use this as more of a commentary, but I think this is really going to help you out. It says this, what I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. People who do not know God in the way he works fuss over these things. But you know both God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. Don't worry about missing out by scrolling on your phone. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Would you stand to your feet right now? Come on over this room. He will help you deal with whatever may come. He will help you deal with whatever may come. He will help you deal with whatever may come. There's no reason to worry. There's no reason to have anxiety. There's no reason to have fear. We have a perfect father. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes right now where you're at? God, we thank you that your perfect love It casts out all fear. If all the prayer team would come forward right now, I'm going to move into altar time here in a moment. God, we thank you, your perfect love, it casts out all fear. Lord, there is no reason for us to worry, to be anxious about tomorrow. But God, by prayer and supplication, God, with thanksgiving, we give it all to you, God, because Lord, we thank you that you're a good father and you hold it all together, that God, you're in control of every circumstance, God. You're in control of every situation that we might be facing, Lord. Lord, may we no longer work and try to make it happen on our own, but rest and know, really know, God, really know who you are, that we are a child of the most high God. Lord, may we walk in that. May we know it, Jesus. May we walk in it with authority, God. Lord, we submit ourselves to you, Jesus. And I pray against the spirit of fear right now. You have to go. You have to leave. Anxious is anxiousness. Go. Fear. Go. Worry. Go. Holy Spirit, come. Come on, just say, Holy Spirit, come. Come on, say, Holy Spirit, come. Come on, would you do, a fav- do me a favor? Lift your hands to heaven right now. Just surrender to God right now. We say, fear go, Holy Spirit come. Fear go, Holy Spirit come. Would you just say that with me? Fear go, Holy Spirit come. Come on again. Fear go, Holy Spirit come. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding invade this place by the power of God. It is not any one thing that we can do, God. But Lord, we fully give it to you right now. Every part, oh Jesus. Every part, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Listen this morning, if you need prayer for worry, for anxiety, for fear, I want to invite you forward right now. I invite you forward to get prayer. The rest of you, man, let's just stay in an attitude of worship. Let's just declare in this house and in this place, fear go, Holy Spirit come. Come on, we need to worship the Lord. If you need prayer, come on forward right now. Come on, let's move, let's move, let's move. I know there's many people in here who are struggling with worry, anxiety, and fear. I struggle with worry, anxiety sometimes. Come on, if you struggle with worry and anxiety, come on down front, get prayer right now. This is not anything to be ashamed of. We can partner with the Holy Spirit to see breakthrough right now. Come on, let's go, let's sing. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yes, thank you, God. Come on. Go, 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 go. 
Come on, 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 come on. Hey, come on forward if you got, if you need prayer at all. I know there's more people in here who need prayer for worry, anxiety, and fear. Come on. If you need prayer at all, come forward. Come on, this is your moment. This is your moment. Sometimes it takes a step of boldness. Sometimes it takes a st- just a decision to step out in faith. Come on, if you struggle with it, it's okay. It's okay. We want to pray with you. Holy Spirit, move in this moment. Do whatever you want to, oh God. We make room for you. You can take the entire room, Holy Spirit. Yes. You can take the entire room, Holy Spirit. We yield to you. Break through in the name of Jesus. Break through in the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus. We will not worry. We will not have fear. this room right now. Let's sing Fear Go, Holy Spirit Come. Come on, lift it up, church. Come on, lift it up, church. Come on, declare it. The same power that conquered the grave lives within you. Come on, declare it right now. There's power in this declaration. There's power in this declaration right now. Come on. Yes, God. Fear Go. Holy Spirit, have your way. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding invade this place. Your peace, Holy Spirit. Your peace, Holy Spirit. Your peace. Your peace, Holy Spirit. Burn like a fire. Burn like a wind. Fear go. Holy Spirit, come. Burn like a fire. Go like a wind. Come on, declare it. Come on, declare it. Yes, Lord. We thank you, God.
Come on, would you just worship the King of Kings this morning? Would you just magnify his name? Would you praise his name? Would you thank him for what he's done in your life? We say, fear you have to go. We say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We thank you, Father, for your presence. We thank you that we are made new in your presence. Come on, he is so good. Listen, this morning we're going into just a time of ministry, a time of prayer that these altars will be opened, continuing throughout the, the remainder of this service. But before we do that, I just want to extend an invitation to know the one true God, to know the Father, to know this Jesus. Because we've been, he, the, the verse was shared, Pastor Adam shared today, that perfect love casts out all fear. But the issue is you need to know that perfect love, that you need to be in relationship with that perfect love. So this morning, if that's you today, and you say, I don't have this relationship, I don't know this perfect love, I don't walk in this walk, I want to know that Father, though. I need that Father in my life. I want to surrender my life today and start living this out. Can you do me a favor? Can you just, where you're at, just lift up a hand to him? Just lift up a hand as a sign of faith, a sign of boldness, and say, Lord, that's, that's me. I need to know that, Father. I need to know and walk in that. And if you raise your hand this morning, I want to encourage you to take that next step. I'm going to pray this prayer, but I want to encourage you to find someone at this altar afterwards and let them know about this decision that you're making because it's not, God has called us to relationship. Pastor Eric shared in the beginning, there's a beauty to this community and it's not meant to be done alone. So if you're walking in that for the first time, you need to get plugged in with other believers who can build you up, encourage you, share more with you, disciple you, find that spiritual father or mother in your life and walk alongside them. So as I pray this prayer, and if this is your first time, I want to encourage you, be moved to action. Do something with it. Don't just let this be an emotional decision in this moment, but let it change your life forever and get to know the Father. Father, we thank you for every person in this room that may have surrendered their life to you right now. What if that is them in this moment, God, I pray that in their own words, they just surrender it all to you. Come on, if that's you, just say, Lord, I give you my life. I surrender it all to you. Lord, forgive me of my sin. Lord, I recognize you as King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, help me walk in relationship with you. Help me devote myself to you. Lord, I recognize you as Christ. And I commit to this day to serve you forever and ever. It's such an incredible moment when someone gives their heart to the Lord. And I don't know in this room who that may have been, but I'm going to go ahead and just declare that I believe someone did this morning. And so, church, can we just celebrate that this morning? Can we celebrate those that are walking in that relationship? Listen, these, these altars are going to remain open, but if you've just given your heart to the Lord for the first time, can you put this number up on the screen? Like I said, I don't want you to go leave today without making this next step. Maybe you're not quite ready to have this one-on-one. -on -one. It feels a little intimidating. Listen, I want to encourage you, first of all, do it. You're going to be thankful you did. But if you didn't quite make it there, you can text this number, 904-503-6772. Text the word Jesus to that number. We'll get in connection with you. We'll help put the resources in your hands, help guide you through this process, what this looks like. But man, we're going to continue in this attitude of worship. We're going to continue to leave these, these altars open for a time of ministry, but service is technically officially dismissed. So I encourage you, hey, seek his presence in your daily life. Seek his presence, encourage and, 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 and know the Lord on a daily, but then also go out and build his people. Share the love of Christ with someone. Tell someone about Jesus this week, church. We love you and God bless.